All right, so class of one. The objective of this lesson is identifying hazards on the water, knowing what they are and knowing how to properly identify them. So for the introduction, we're going to be looking at this picture of water hazards and um, you're going to point out what some possible hazards are and why they're hazardous, also how this person, well, how the people in the sailboat and which people would be identifying them. So, real quick. No idea if you can see that. That's real bad. All right. So, uh, what do you see here? I see a rock with a symbol on it, a flag on it. That's what do you call it? A hazard marking on it. Okay. I Which would be bad because you don't want to hit the rock. Obviously. Uh, I see really rough water in the distance, so it must be bad weather coming this way, or wind gusts. <clears throat> I see thunder clouds. More bad water. I see channel markers and boat traffic, as well as other boats in the water. Okay. Um, now, who do you think should be in charge of identifying these things in the sailboat when you have one skipper and one crew? The crew. Why is that? Because they're up front and looking at what's out there. I really haven't got a clue. All right. That works. Yeah, so you don't see anything more within this picture? Um, clouds, other boats. I think that's not everything. All right, that's good, that's good. So, um, hazards on the water. Big ones are obviously rocks, which you can tell if they're marked and you see buoys or if you see um, little tri triangular hazard markers that will identify them, you can also tell if you see just a change in texture in the water or like a constant almost like surfacing of water from the waves and that's obviously hazardous um, yeah dump boats and just like canoers that's an obvious one but but incoming traffic from other boats um, something that's helpful to identify whether they will be coming or not and um, how strong is whether you're in a channel or not and if you see those green and red buoys signifying that you are within a channel you know that there's a greater likelihood that you'll be facing some more oncoming traffic which could lead to a potential collision if you're not aware of that and also just the waves created by bow riders and such can be a pain and definitely worth being aware of so here where you pointed out the rougher water, what that picture was trying to get at was like a gust which would be um, identified by yeah, plenty of tiny little ripples and a darker patch in the water, which means mm -hmm. that there will be heavier wind there. And if you don't identify that in time, that can be hazardous because you can have a sudden raise and wind up to, like that could be over five knots at times which can really affect your sailing if your crew isn't ready to get out on trapeze and whatnot um, i couldn't draw a lull here but i think that a lull is just important to identify a lull would be identified where the water has a glassy calmer more mirror like surface amidst uh, a rougher a rougher area and having that sudden fall in wind can be equally hazardous if your tr um, crew isn't aware that it's coming and they're on trapeze and all of a sudden you lose three or four knots of wind and they get teabagged which you can lose a, a lot of speed and you know, maybe the boat could tip to windward but that's very unlikely still dangerous yeah the most obvious ones well, one of the most obvious ones, as you pointed out, were the thunderheads, because that obviously means that there is stormy weather ahead, and with metal masts, lightning is um, 
pretty dangerous to boats and the safety of the sailors within them. So the person who is going to be identifying hazards, whose job is to be identifying the hazards, is the crew. Why not the skipper? Um, the role of the, like, the collective roles of the two sailors, the crew's job is to be looking for wind gusts and all of those things, and the skipper um, focuses on performing their actions based on the information given to them by the crew, and the skipper's already focusing on so many other things. So the, that doesn't mean that the skipper shouldn't be trying to have a general awareness of um, their surroundings, which obviously is the case, but the, it is specifically the crew's job to be looking for gusts and lulls and be calling out like gust in five or lull in five, and then maybe count down so that the skipper is fully aware of that and able to act accordingly. Okay, so just to wrap things up, could you, without looking at this picture, just think of what I've told you, brainstorm what are some different common hazards, um, why they could be potentially dangerous and how to identify them? Yes. I would say the rocks that are marked, as well as ones that are not marked, and ones that are just under the surface that are submerged, that you can see by the change in the water pattern, the wave pattern over them. Mm -hmm. um, any other debris in the water, including uh, um, things like other uh, sailboats or submerged uh, um, items, maybe deadheads, logs. Okay. Uh, other boats, sailboats, canoes, kayaks, swimmers in the water, um, channels, floating channels, other boats in the water, and of course bad weather, thunderheads, um, rain, and lulls in the water, lulls in the wind as well. Yeah, anything besides lulls? Do you remember what the other one is? The opposite? Wind. Which is called a gust. Yeah. A gust. And how do you identify those two again? By the uh, surface of the water. Okay. So the wind you've got a gust, it's darker and ripply. Yeah. And when it's a lull, it's a shiny mirror like finish. Yeah, so the opposite of a gust, pretty much. Okay. And whose job is it to identify hazards? The skipper. The crew. The crew, there you go. The okay. crew. Sorry about that. Got them backwards. Yeah. I missed that lesson. <laughs> okay, um, I think that's about it. Okay, now I know how to identify a hazard. Fantastic. Obviously this lesson would have gone a bit longer if there had been more than one person to um, be part of the brainstorming and guided discovery at the beginning and um, give input and whatnot. But that was... Uh, it was reduced to a fraction of what it could been, could have been. Thank you.